What's up guys, Steven Ader, 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah uh, yes, list day, and today we're talking about the top 10 best cards of the year, 2021, baby! The best part about this list is, I haven't played real Yu-Gi-Oh the entire year, so half of these cards I've never seen before, so we're just gonna roll with it. Thank you Discord for putting the list together for me, and uh, thank you Kieran for including the notes of why any of this is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna take your word on it, buddy. So it's one of those episodes where you guys get to see if Dave knows what he's talking about <laughs> given the limited information placed in front of him. Also been really busy lately with some things, so Ryan's gonna edit this one, so I can't wait to see how how he does that. He's gonna make fun of me the whole time, isn't he? Without further ado, let's get started. Sword Soul of Mo Yi! <laughs> Yay! Level 4 Water Worm Monster with 1700 attack, 1800 defense. What do? If this card is normal or special summon, you can reveal one Sword Soul card or one Worm Monster in your hand to special summon a Sword Soul token to your side of the field. It is also a Water Worm level 4 with zero attack and zero defense. Which you might be thinking, oh cool, I can just link that away. Except for the fact the next line of text explains that you can't do anything but synchro summoning if you control that token. Good thing that token is a tuner. Holy sh**. <laughs> this thing just summons a tuner token? That's crazy. That's a free level 8 synchro. That's actually fantastic. And it's a good thing that it includes that line of text, because otherwise, uh... I can think of one thing that you'd be inclined to summon. But not only that, if this card is sent to the graveyard for a synchro summon, you get to draw a card. That is so free! It summons its own tuner and replaces itself upon use. <laughs> this deck must be very good. Because <laughs> it's normal or special. So if something else summoned it, you just can, you can, it's a starter or an extender. That's, that's a very, that's a very good card. Cross out designator. I actually know what this one does. <laughs> Quick play spell card. Declare one card name, banish one of that declared card from your main deck, and then basically you just negate that card. Negate its effects, negate its activated effects, and effects on the field currently. Just, if any, it, it's just a quick play prohibition, basically. Until the end of this turn. You can only use one of these once per turn. <laughs> Call itself. That'd be... <laughs> Can you imagine? I uh, cross out designator, you're a cross out designator. Just like called by the grave before, a quick play spell card that we can use to respond and negate hand traps is extremely useful in the game of Yugi Mans. Hand traps are a necessary evil because if you don't have them, a uh, combo deck just go crazy burr. But also conversely, it's kind of stupid if you can just ash one card and completely stop their play line entirely. So, you know, you kind of need some interaction in the game to make it a game. So having an option for combo players, or even control I suppose, to stop the hand trap that's going to stop your entire turn is extremely powerful. Not only that, but like if it's in a mirror match or something, you could totally call uh, like the, the, your own starter or whatever if you have an extra copy of it and stop your opponent from doing it So there's some added utility there and what I really like about this card is it's very very good But it comes with a cost and that cost is it basically forces you to fill your deck with a bunch of weird one-offs So that if you want to have as much utility of it as possible instead of running three ash It might be better to run an ash and an effect veiler and an abiru because that way you cover your bases it must suck if like, you have the ash in your hand and your opponent activates ash and you got this. <laughs> You're gonna break. Tri Brigade Bear Brum. The Rampant Rampager. <laughs> Jerome, come on, man. Link to Fire Beast Monster. 1700 attack. Made of two Tri Brigade Monsters. The first effect says you can discard two cards and then target one of your banished beast, beast warrior, or wing beast monsters and special summon it. But it also has the effect of if this card is sent to the graveyard, you can add one Tri Brigade spell or trap from your deck to your hand. But then you have to place one card from your hand to the bottom of your deck and you're locked into Tri Brigades for the rest of the turn. Obvious utility here is if you link it away for one of the higher link rating Tri Brigades and you get to get one of your spell or traps. Probably Revolt. I would think Revolt would be the one you'd grab because it's a uh, non targeting banish. Underworld Goddess of the Closed World is number seven. They missed opportunity to call it Underworld Goddess of the Underworld. <laughs> that would have been, been peak Jerome. 
Holy crap, it's a Link 5! That's a big number! With 3,000 attack and actually really cool artwork made of four plus effect monsters. That's, you don't get much of a discount on that one, do you? Oh, there it is. <laughs> you can also, wow. Just reading this for the first time. You can also use one monster your opponent controls as link material for this card, holy <laughs> But like any good boss monster, it needs to have some sort of self-protection to be worth all of that investment. If this card is linked, summon, negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent controls. <laughs> God, just keep it! Just keep that one! God, Ermagerd Gersperms! Okay, so it hits the field and it's a blanket negate for all your opponent's crap. This thing is also unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they specifically target this card, which might have the award for being the weirdest specific protection I've ever read on a Yu-Gi-Oh card. <laughs> it's not, not protected against card effects, it's only protected against activated effects, that don't target this thing. So, Regeki, I guess. You can still kill it with Karma Cut. It also has the effect that once per turn, if your opponent activates a card or effect that would special summon a monster, you can negate that activation. You know what, I don't even think it needs that effect. That's just that's just a cherry on top. Those 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 first three are actually really, that's all it needs. It's, this is a very strong card. I like, I really like using your opponent's crap. That is so good. All right, number six, Small World, the normal spell card. It's a small, world after all. small World is one of the best spell cards I have ever seen because it allows you in a normal spell card to search any monster from your deck. However, it's not all sunshine and daisies. You gotta work for it. You gotta do some big brainage. So we're gonna break it down. We're gonna break. We're gonna break Small World down for you, folks. Step one. Reveal a monster in your hand. Step two, reveal a monster in your deck. The monster in the deck needs to share one of these attributes with the monster in the hand. Level, attribute, type, attack, or defense. Or, it's one attribute, pick one. Then, you banish the hand monster face down. Step three, take a monster from your deck to your hand that shares one of those attributes with the second monster you chose from your deck. They don't need to be the same one. Nor do they need to be the same attribute as the one with the one in the hand. Oh god. Uh, okay, so there's there's three monsters happening here. Monster one is in your hand. Monster two is a rando from the deck. Number three is the one you actually want. They each need to share an attribute between them, but it does not need to be the same one. For instance, monster one and two could share attack, but monster two and three could share defense. Kieran's example is Nibiru in hand, Ghost Ogre in deck, and adding Alistair the Invoker. Thank God you can only activate one of these per turn. <laughs> because um, the mental hula hoop you have to do to get this card to work is a pain in the butt. I'm su I suppose that if you get used to using it, you probably have a set play line you always pick and like you always reveal this one, you always reveal this one a second, you always get this one with the third. So it, it probably, the thinking probably drops off after a couple times, but you know, big brain players are gonna come down to when you when there's like no time left on the clock and you're like, I need it's I need I need the monster and you play it and you're like and you know like you go through like your your Galphanakis moment and then all of a sudden you, you get the cards you need. I don't know. <laughs> I can't I can't wait to start playtesting this thing. Number five is F Zero, Utopic Draco Future. Rank zero light warrior XE monster. This thing is made of three XC monsters with the same rank, except number monsters. This card's original rank is always considered one, and it's always considered a Utopic Future card. Also, you can XC summon this card using Utopic Future, the, the regular one, as XC material. Its materials become this thing's materials. What's Utopic Future made of? I don't remember. I haven't seen this card in years. Oh, he's made of two XC monsters with the same rank, except number monsters. Ah! See? That's the easier lift. It's literally just one less thing to do. Okay, cool. That's probably how you're making this. Cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects. All right, decent protection. Also, as a quick effect, this thing says once per turn when your opponent activates a monster effect and detach material from this card and negate that activation. And if that thing was on the field, gain control of it. Ooh, it's a toad. It's just a big toad. This card's great. This best card 2021. You know what? This thing's actually like really strong. Is this meta? Big beat stick? That's this is a very powerful card. Holy crap. It, big investment. Big investment to make, but you get you get your money's worth, and that's always good to see. I could play some Melfis! Oh my god! Oh I can't wait. Now I now I actually want to play real Yu-Gi-Oh again. This is a good card. 
Number four is Drayton Moo Beta Male Faf. Be I actually called it Beta Male. Drayton Moo Beta Fafnir. Rank one light machine. 2k attack, zero defense. Nice. Two plus level one monsters. It's that's a pretty good attack for a rank one, an actual rank one. Very neat. When you ritual summon, what the f- Now Dave is intrigued. Oh, that's cool! Okay, this is neat. When you ritual summon, you can detach materials from this card to be used as the ritual material for that ritual summon. And you can only use the following effects of this next thing once per turn. If this card is exceeds summon, you can mill one Dryden monster from your deck to the graveyard. Okay, cool, it's set up. This is probably a play starter. It also says if you control a ritual machine monster, presumably one of their own Dryden monsters, Quick effect, if your opponent activates a spell or trap, you can detach a material from this card to negate that activation. It's nice to see some ritual support, you know? Uh, the weird red-headed stepchild of the summoning mechanics. Alright, baby, number three, Pot of Prosperity. More like Pot of Perspire. Haha! <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh players are smelly. Pot of Duality being one of my favorite consistency cards in the game of Yu-Gi-Oh Mans. Being a simple one for one, but you get to pick that one for one from the top three cards of your deck is very, very neat. So what's this thing do? You can banish three or six monsters, your choice, from your extra deck, face down. Seems to be a running theme with the new pot cards. For the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, your opponent only takes half damage, I guess, sure. But you also get to excavate the top cards from your deck equal to the number of banished face down monsters from your extra deck and then add one of those excavated cards from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one of these per turn, and you cannot draw cards by card effect for the rest of the turn. All right, so it basically uh, it's basically a, a, a one-for-one -one upgrade to Pot of Duality, because not only do you get to special summon this turn, which Duality didn't allow you to do, banishing six from your extra deck allows you to excavate deeper into your deck to get the card you actually want, because the, the three, you normally get something pretty decent, but sometimes you whiff, sometimes you get another Duality, big oof. This lets you go a little bit deeper so you have a better chance of hitting something you want. This is really, really nice for those unsearchable floodgates, things like that, that, you know, the, your tech cards in your deck that you want to just kind of like, you know, put the little cherry in the top of your board, just that one little extra, like that little judgment just right there, that kind of stuff, a little imperial order, oh, perfect board, it cannot break. Stuff you can't normally get by other means, this is a really neat way of doing that, and I really like that. It's not like a, an alpha card or anything. It literally just, you can just play it. This is so good. That is a fantastic card. These cards are good. Of course they're good, Dave. They're the best cards of the year. Baron de Fleur is number three. What the hell is he? A level 10 warrior wind synchro monster. Oh, damn. I'm not going to know how to play this. 3k attack, 2400 defense. That's, that's pretty low for a level 10. But, uh, okay, what do you do? One tuner, one non-tuner. Oh, he's generic. Hmm. Once per turn, you can target one card in the field, destroy it. This thing also has a quick effect that says, once while this card is faced up on the field, when a card or effect is activated, you can negate that card effect and destroy that card. I love that it's an omni-negate, but only the one time. That's cool. You have to like re-summon it somehow in order to reset it. That seems fair. That's fair. And its last effect says, once per turn during the standby phase, you can target one level nine or lower monster in your graveyard, special summon it, and then return this thing to the extra deck. See, that's, that's how you do it. Ah, it's all coming together. Oh yeah, it's all coming together. Basically, you summon back one of its materials and then get another tuner back on board and then resummon it again. It resets itself. Okay, that's cool. I like that it can summon up to a level nine, because I mean, I don't know how you made this, maybe a five and a five or something, but if you made it with a nine and a one, like an absolute mad lad, uh, level 9 synchros, a lot of those are really good, so like, you can replace this for something that's also pretty nasty, so that I like that too. Not only does it reset itself, but you can get back one of its good material, which might have been a shame to get rid of in the first place. I like that. That's cool. Alright, number one. Destiny Hero, destroy Phoenix Enforcer. <laughs> Destroy Phoenix Enforcer. Get him! Level 8 Dark Warrior Fusion Monster. 2500 attack, 2100 defense. What do? This thing is made of one level 6 or higher hero monster. <laughs> so malicious, I guess. And one destiny hero monster. Monsters your opponent controls lose 200 attack for each hero monster in your graveyard. Interesting, I suppose. You can only use the following effects each once per turn. Quick effect, you can destroy one card on your field and one other card on the field, regardless of player. Also, if this card is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can special summon one Destiny Hero monster during the next standby phase. 
Presumably itself, because you can pop itself, summon it back. Neat. Okay, so Fusion Destiny is a fusion spell card that allows you to use material from your deck as, as to summon the card. And it's level six or, oh, so you, you could dump the malicious off the fusion. Oh, okay. Dave's good at Yu-Gi-Oh, folks. All right, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm actually really excited for the worst of because because all of those cards are like comically bad. I am super excited. I've already gone through those. I'm 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 stoked. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. He's, he's the big fanifest man. Ah uh, yes, list eight. Today we're talking about the top 10 best cards of the year 2001. 2001? <laughs> I said that, I said that so confidently. Sword Soul. <laughs> and, Creepy. Say card! Banish card! Yay! Number seven is Underworld. <laughs> closed world! Welcome to closed world. <laughs> Shut that door! If this card is linked, summoned and negates all face-up monster effects, your opponent can- well, your opponent. Your opponent. All face-up monster effects, your opponent- your opponent current controls! Why do I say- get rep? If this card is linked, I'm going to negate the effects of all face-up monsters your opponent during your controls. <laughs> oh, just keep it. Just keep that one. A pernit. You're a pernit. God. Ermagerd Gersperms.